Oh, we're, we're on. Giddy up. Welcome to Jackson Juicy Nation, everyone. I'm just gonna do the live video, continuation of the live video that was on my um, regular page here. This is just a more in-depth. Jeez, look at that for a view of the sky. This is the morning. It looks like it's the evening. It looks like a sunset behind me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it. Fuck it. If you can't see me, you can't see me. That's your problem. Listen. Couple of considerations on knowing how often you should train. And this is a very common question I get asked. It's like, how many days should I go to the gym? Um, and it's not just as simple as three, five, seven, fifteen. Like there's there's a lot of considerations to be taken uh, into account when it comes to answering this question. But I'm going to help you come up with the answer yourself. Okay. Um, spin this because I can't really see there we go that's a bit see the way I, I, I appear back in light um, again it's, it's like I'm in a studio here um, anyway the considerations to think about when it comes to knowing how often you should go to the gym is number one what is your goal okay are you number one trying to lose body fat number two trying to build muscle or three a combination of both listen if you just want to lose fat and you want to be healthier you don't need a gym membership I used to fucking own a gym and I've been sprouting this shit for I don't know how long even when I had a gym if you're looking if you're trying to lose body fat only you don't need a gym you don't need it you need to control what goes in the cake hole, track your calories, and walk. Just move. Just get out on the two legs and fucking walk. Get a minimum of 10,000 steps a day, bang. Six to eight months down the road, you be consistent with that, fat's gone. Just saved your fucking fortune. Well, gyms nowadays are like $5 a week. It's fucking for nothing. So the fact that if you don't have a gym membership, you're fucking tight ass. Simple as. I got three gym memberships at the moment. I, I owned a gym and now I've gone to, from no gym to three memberships of gyms. Just so I have a selection, you know? Train different things in different places. All right. So that's the simplest thing. Now, maybe your goal is to uh, build muscle or you want to lose fat and build muscle uh, at the same time, okay? Or you want to do it simultaneously. And it is possible. Depends on, you know, people will say you can't build muscle and lose fat at the same time. Well, that's all depending on how much fucking fat you have to lose. If there's a fair bit of fucking cushion for the pushing, I can, I can be damn sure you're going to lose a bit while you're trying to build muscle. And I'm going to say to you right now, I think the goal of trying to build a bit of muscle is extremely important. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what walk of life you're in or what age you are. Building muscle is always key. You build more muscle on your body, your body's going to automatically start burning more calories. Now, let me dispel any uh, misconception about building muscle. It fucking takes a long time. You can lose a lot, a lot of fat much quicker than you can build even half the amount of muscle, even a third of the amount of muscle. It's just slow. Um, your body has a great way of regulating down to a certain body weight or homeostasis that if you try and change that, it can keep coming back there regardless. Um, so if you want to build muscle, um, it's by because you're putting stress and strain on the muscle fibers themselves and therefore they're building stronger and therefore you keep them but if you're not applying the stress regularly forget about the muscle it just doesn't happen so anyone that's out there that's thinking well i don't want to build muscle because i don't want to become um like fucking super big or super bulky or something fuck doesn't happen that easy i have been trying to build muscle my entire life i even take supplements to help me in this process as well and it's still a fucking hard job it's still an uphill battle all the fucking time to get there and to get to get to put on any amount even as like a, a kilo a kilo of muscle doesn't seem like much but that could be a, easily a solid six months of work it's not gonna happen overnight anyway I'm digressing the intensity so we're at the gym we're, we're, we're going to the gym now we're, we're talking about the intensity Okay, the intensity is uh, of what I'm talking about is basically uh, uh, towards the end of your sets, 
you should be working to hard reps or struggling fucking hard to finish those reps out. Not necessarily going to failure every single time, but pushing that the heart rate starts to spike and you know it's it's wobbly to get the, the the weights up and maybe you don't quite get it fully out but you need to be working at that intensity quite a bit of the time if you're not working to that intensity you're not putting enough stress on the muscle it's not going to grow if you're going into the gym and you're picking up weights and you're able to get out 15 and you're able to put the weights down and you're not feeling too bad and you're able to go for a drink and sit down and do the same again quite quickly, that's not, that's not hard enough. You are, you're just doing cardio uh, and you're not getting the, the stimulation on the muscle that's required. I'm not saying you need to be picking up the heaviest weights in the fucking gym, but you need to be working at a weight that allows you to knock out a minimum of eight reps but you're not able to go from eight to 20 reps super easy. That, something that's gonna fucking challenge you every time you pick them up, okay? And the more you do this, the more you practice this, the better you start to learn your own intensity, the more you start to learn your own intensity, the, the, the smarter you will work and the more uh, emphasis you will put on certain, I'll keep feeling my chest here because it's the closest muscle to the camera. So it, it's about learning how to really squeeze that muscle and, this isn't something that happened overnight, but I know now when I pick up any weights to build chest, any press motion I'm doing, I know how to create tension through my pec, through every single part of the, the movement. Therefore, I can train it harder doing less work because I know how to soup up my intensity really fucking quickly. That comes with training experience, okay? Now, the next thing, is your exercise selection. This is hugely important. It's not just a matter of going into the gym and just picking fucking random this, 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 and this. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not the biggest fan, if, especially if you're trying to build muscle, of like, you know, doing a full body style workout. It's, it, it's not optimal. Um, to especially if you want if you're trying to build or sculpt a particular part ladies are always trying to fucking at the moment build their build their arses and I'm so glad I'm so glad it's fantastic it's fucking fantastic um, but this is a great change women um, strength women wanting to be strong has really fucking pushed forward and it and I, do you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna thank CrossFit for that CrossFit has definitely um, emphasize uh, like that women one can be strong and possibly somewhat, somewhat more dominant in certain skills and movements than men um, and I, I'm going to put that down to the fucking CrossFit movement it's definitely changed a lot of things uh, people training with a barbell people fucking lifting weights squatting going old school going old school um, I used to own a CrossFit gym. Now I don't train CrossFit as much. I, I definitely use elements of it. But I think there's a huge amount of uh, tip my hat towards CrossFit that uh, it deserves it. It fucking deserves it because it, it changed the fitness industry uh, for the good. For the good. But anyway, exercise selection. Compound movements are your base. Back squat with a barbell, not in the fucking Smith machine. Deadlift. Bench press, barbell row, strict military press. If that was all you were ever to do, you become a strong motherfucking animal. Now, there's also isolated movements that are super important to add in, but they'll go along with the compounds. Your compound movement in any program I'm ever gonna do for anyone, the base is a compound movement. For me, you will always squat. Most, most times I'm giving people programs with two leg days. The legs are the strongest and biggest muscles in the body. If you don't look after your legs, they won't carry you around for long. We all need to be able to fucking pull shapes and dance on the dance floor on a Saturday night. If your legs aren't strong enough, they're not gonna hold you up, especially if you're demented. So make sure, making sure that you train the legs is hugely important. So if, if you, as I said, base your movements around a compound first. Now, from there, there's a particular body part that you want to build. As I said, ladies are loving to build their glutes and um, hamstrings at the moment. That's a the big, the, it's fucking, as I said, fantastic. Boys want to build fucking chest, a back. You've got to focus. You do have to isolate those muscles in order to put the focus on building them. Oh, check this out. Boat spotting. Whoa. Holy hell. It's all the MDMA again. 
follow me around leaving. Um, so yes, for example, you might start off with back squats as your main, your main compound movement, um, and then move on to, if you're building your glutes, the most common movement at the moment is the old hip thrust. You know, if a guy wants to build a chest, he might start off with barbell, barbell uh, bench, or maybe dumbbell bench, because both of them are compounds, and then move into um, an isolated movement, cable flies, or a machine press. And machines are great because they take out the, the need to have to stabilize so you can actually push more. So I'm never gonna say like, free weights are any better than uh, machine weights, because both of them have their place. But definitely learning to use free weights is going to have a lot of advantage. Anyway, the last thing, your recovery. Exercise selection and now recovery. I use a whoop strap to measure my recovery on a daily basis. And this dictates how often I'm going to go to the gym and how hard I'm going to go at the gym. Now, let me just state this. That whether you're going to decide to go to the gym three days a week or seven days a week, if your recovery is not optimal, it doesn't matter how many times you go to the gym in a week, nothing's gonna work. You're not gonna get the results. You're literally pushing shit up a hill. So you must prioritize your recovery. Nutrition is part of your recovery. Sleep is hugely important. That's when you grow, that's when you make those steps forward. So if you are having something to help you measure your recovery, or you're not tracking your sleep hours in some way shape or form start doing it because this is really how we figure out what how many times we need to be going to the gym now to cut the long story short and to give you the outline of what i would recommend three to four times a week in the gym is plenty for muscle building plenty because the results from what you want are gonna come from what you're doing outside the gym. Okay, you spend one hour in the gym, and if you tick all the boxes, exercise selection, intensity, all those sort of things, and you're doing them right, and you understand your goal, and you're putting in a solid effort every time in the gym, three to four times is all you need. It's all you need. You don't need any more. So, I also understand people like to go to the gym because it's a disconnect, so it's that social, uh, meeting other people, uh, uh, mental health benefit. So go, to, go more times to the gym than three to four. But remember, it's about your recovery. If you know your recovery isn't top of the bottom, don't put in a mad session. Maybe just go and hop on a bike or a treadmill and just to get in there and just to, to move. Maybe do some sort of a yoga class or something like that. But when you're working well and working hard and working smart, three to four times is plenty. I hope that helps narrow down what you should be doing but really and truly what we're looking at here is everything else outside the number of times we go to the gym now don't don't ask that question what's your goal how are you actually working when you're in there uh, what is the exercise selection you should be using and what's your fucking recovery like hope that helps thanks for being part of the group giddy up